morning, everybody. Well, gosh, it's been a month already. Well, the mad scientists have come out of their laboratory to share something fun with you guys. Today, we're going to make fake snow. However, before we make the snow, we need to know exactly what is snow. And to let you know about that is Ms. Mad Scientist, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm here to talk about how snow forms and different properties of snow. And I'll let you know I had a lot of fun learning about snow, so I hope this information is interesting to you too. So, snow is a, an accumulation of ice crystals. It forms when the atmospheric temperature, so that's not temperature here at the ground, but the temperature up in the sky where the clouds are when it's at or below freezing temperatures. So that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Um, and there has to be moisture in the air too because the ice crystals have to form from something, right? If the temperature at the ground is at or below freezing as well, then the snow that forms up in the sky will actually reach us down here on the ground. If it's not, it will just melt and we would just feel a really cold rain or it would evaporate completely before reaching us and we wouldn't see anything at all. But once snow crystals form in the atmosphere, they grow using the surrounding water droplets around it. So while it can be too warm for snow to form, it can't be too cold. The main thing that um, the air needs is moisture for the snow to form. So the combination of snow and ice on the ground is what affects the qualities of snow. So it can affect the color, the density, so how thick it is or how fluffy it is. Um, let's see, conditions at ground level also affect it. So let's think, talk about wind for a second. If there are really, really strong winds here on the ground, so it's snowing and wind is blowing the snow everywhere, that's gonna break apart the snow and break apart the ice crystals, making it shards instead. And it's going to make the snow pack a lot tighter. So think about the difference between ice cubes in a cup and ice shards, like crushed ice. So when you have the ice cubes, they're a lot looser, but if you have ice, uh, ice, <laughs> ice shards, it's gonna be a lot tighter packed, right? So snow can also affect how sound travels. Have you ever noticed that on a really snowy day after it snows, things count, sound kind of muffled? Well, that's because when there's a fresh layer of snow on the ground, it kind of absorbs sound like a sponge. It's a sound sponge. <laughs> on the other hand, when snow melts and then refreezes, it makes it a little bit tighter, kind of like an ice sheet, and then sound will bounce off of it, making things sound a lot more crisp and clear. Well, Let's think about something else for a second. Have you ever thought about how snow can be a good insulator? I know that's kind of surprising, right? When you think of snow, you think cold. Well, it's such a good insulator that some animals in nature even use snow as their hideouts for the winter. New snow, the fluffy kind that's made when there's not much wind, so not windy and ice shard snow like I was talking about earlier, it's made of a high percentage of air, making it fluffier. So since this fresh, unpacked snow is about 90% or so trapped air, it can, let's see, so since the air can barely move, the outside air temperature doesn't affect the inside of it. Does that make sense? So although snow itself is cold, if, let's say, the space around me is all snow. If I were to dig a hole underneath, since this 
air down here by the ground is warmer than the air outside where it's windy and it's probably still snowing, it's going to be warmer in here in the snow cave than it is outside. So if you were for some reason trapped outside in a snowstorm, you could dig a snow cave and stay warmer than you would outside just getting hit by the wind. Well, that's all the cool information I have on snow. Cool information. I'm gonna pass it back over to mad scientist Kathy and we're gonna make some snow. So, thank you, mad scientist Caroline. That was some awesome information, wasn't it? Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about three types of snow that can be formed. You heard Miss Caroline told you how snow is formed. Well, there's three types. One type are just regular snowflakes, and you guys have seen them. They're real pretty. Um, those are just single ice crystals. Like I said, single ice crystals are clusters of ice crystals. Then you have one of my favorite forms of snow, and that's called hoarfrost. And you'll see hoarfrost sometimes up on the Blue Ridge Parkway, just driving up to Mount Mitchell. What hoarfrost does, it's ice crystals on a surface. And that happens when the temperature of the surface is lower than the frost point of the surrounding air. So basically, if you're driving up and you see these bushes and they look like they're just covered in this glistening, shining, beautiful white snow, it's not really snow. It's hoarfrost. It's frozen. Well, they're already frozen, but it's ice crystals that are, that are adhering to things. Okay. Then we have another one called grapple. That's kind of a strange name, isn't it? Grapple. Grapple are snowflakes that have become rounded and opaque. So they're like little round pellets about this big. Now, some people will mistake them for hail, but they're not true hail. They're actually snow. They just don't have that pretty snowflake formation about them, okay? Um, grapple is sometimes also called snow pellets, right? You've seen it. I know you've seen it. And then the last type are polycrystals, and that's when you take a bunch of snowflakes and it makes big, big flakes, okay? So out of all of those types of snow, what type of snow do you think we're gonna make today? Is it a snowflake or grapple or hoarfrost? Ha, gotcha, it's none. We're making <laughs> fake snow. All right, so if Ms. Caroline, our mad scientist, would just come a little bit closer, look right here, so we can both work on this together. The first thing we're going to do is add three cups of baking soda to our bowl. So we have, whew, there's one cup uh, of baking uh, uh. soda. Wah! <laughs> Hang on, make sure you crumple up your baking soda because as with baking and any type of scientific measurement, you want to make sure this stuff is a pretty accurate measurement. Ugh. And it's squished in there. All right, crunch some of that in. Okay. Man, thank you so much. Okay, there we go. And then let's do one more cup, please. Ooh, oh. that's okay. We can take some extra in there. Yay, okay. that's good. All right, so we have three <laughs> cups of very fuzzy baking soda. Ms. Mad Scientist Caroline, will you pour in one half cup of white conditioner? And now what's gonna happen when we mix this together, guys, the sodium bicarbonate, that's the baking soda, yeah, you can taste it, is gonna mix with the lanolin and the acid in the conditioner, and that causes an endothermic reaction. What does that mean? It means when we mix this stuff together, it's gonna need to take some energy in from the air, which is gonna cause this to get cold. So let's see what it does. And dump it in there. And let's, you want to take a fork or you want to take a finger? Fingers are good too. And let's stir this stuff around. We're using a fork. You want to use a fork? We're using a fork because it tends to make it mix in better and make the snow, whoop, the snow crystals a little bit. Oh, it is working. Like a it? whisk. Yeah, kind of like a whisk, exactly. Okay. I think we might need to get in there with a the hand. I think so too. Let's do that. Oh my goodness. And folks, it is cold. Um, go ahead. Oh, it smells good too. Yeah, it's cold and it smells good. Yeah, if you want to get some really nice smelling snow, you can get some conditioner oh, with a good scent. 
It is cold. And if you see, it's starting to form a ball of snow. So how about we take this outside? Because I think Miss Shauna won't like us throwing snowballs in the library. <laughs> Do you? No, no. Let's take this outside. All right, guys, we made it outside. Ha ha. And we have our snowballs. Once again, remember, it does. It goes together really well, okay? So what we're going to do, just to show you how much fun you can have with this, we have a blank wall over here, and we're just going to take a few shots at the wall. Are you ready, yeah. Mad Scientist Caroline? I am. Well, go ahead. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so much fun! <laughs> Couple more guys. Let's try. Here we go. Are we ready? <laughs> and besides throwing it at things, you can also make a little snowman or a snow creature or a snow whatever you want. But since we have here, we'll be nice and we'll share. The sharing's always good. That's Caroline. We have two more snowballs left, and that's the end of our lesson for today. Next month, we're going to make unbreakable bubbles. I wonder how that's going to happen. I don't know. Stay tuned.